Sonnenberg here. Today we're talking about plants for food and fiber. Uh, Science 7 students, this is topic 1 in your textbook uh, titled People and Plants. And today what we're going to be talking about is da -da -da, plants for fiber. Now the last two screencasts we talked about plants' role in the environment, which is very important as we learned. And we also talked about plants for food, so us ingesting it and, and what type of foods do we eat that originate from plants that we wouldn't even think that they might originate from plants. Like uh, one thing we talked about was my obsession with chocolate and the fact that each one of you is going to bring a chocolate treat to class as soon as I'm back and you're going to leave it on my desk for me to eat, which is very nice of you guys and I appreciate you guys volunteering to do that uh, for me. That's why I like you guys because you're awesome, very thoughtful. <laughs> Anyways, so now we're going to talk about plants for fiber though and the difference between plants for food, which we eat, and plants for fiber. Now, I'm not talking fiber like uh, Raisin Bran cereal or Fiber One bars. I'm talking about fiber as in like clothing. I'm talking about fiber as in paper or possibly some form of material that's used for shelter. So what we actually do is we take these uh, stems, uh, the leaves, the seeds, the roots of these plants, and we can actually, they have tissues. Now, uh, we haven't talked about it, you talk more about it in depth in grade 8, but what actually happens is um, there's cells that make up both plants and animals, and then a series of those cells working together actually form tissues. And so these tissues in the plants, if we actually stretch them apart, we can use the fibers of those tissues and we can make materials, as a lot of them are very strong and, and can be used for these forms. So it was actually an example of people that used to use it as Aboriginal people from the West Coast. They used to wove cloth from the bark of the Western Red Cedar Tree and they would basically, they take those tissues from that bark and they could wove them together and they could make uh, clothing, and which is very useful. And I'm glad they came up with, or people have come up with clothing because uh, I'm glad I get to wear clothing each day. <laughs> But uh, I just want to show you, uh, so a lot of the clothing we have today though isn't necessarily from these natural um, tissues and fibers anymore. A lot of it is a synthetic. So this shirt here is a 100% polyester shirt. It's one of my golf shirts, I'll just hold it up. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good I guess, hey? Alright, but it's a stretchy material, it's very almost silky and soft and smooth. Um, but synthetic materials are manufactured materials, so they're not natural. And we talked about manufactured versus uh, natural structures, materials, and such. And this is manufactured, so it's made through chemical processes to make this uh, polyester material. Now, this is made from more natural fibers. So, cotton, okay, um, we, we can use cotton, and, and there's a picture of it on the screen here, but cotton can be used for thousands of useful products. Um, it supports a lot of jobs in industry and it's a very important crop. But this shirt here, if you just take a look at the tag, hopefully you can read that, it says 100% cotton and so this is uh, made from natural fibers and um, not as much give uh, in this fiber. It still stretches a little bit but I know when I have this on it's not as breathable as the synthetic one. It's a little warmer. Um, and it, it doesn't just have to give like the uh, synthetic that I find it's not as comfortable but this is made from natural fibers now uh, you can put your name in a draw and the winner of the draw is going to win this shirt uh, I'm just joking no this shirt actually just a little story about this shirt this shirt came from my trip to Thailand so it may look like it's a Lacoste shirt and it's probably worth something but I think it only cost me about three dollars Canadian because in Thailand everything is has labels but it's not actually real and so this shirt was purchased there um, one of my my trips as a reward for myself to go travel after I got my degree in education so that's where that shirt came from so I'm probably not gonna give that one away even though it doesn't really fit anymore so cotton uh, is very versatile uh, it's uh, Really, it's noted for versatility, appearance, performance, and just kind of its natural comfort. Now, cotton is soft, um, and it is comfortable, um, but now all these new synthetic materials are more durable, possibly breathable and such. So they're coming up with ways, but of course these natural structures and natural fibers are actually 
uh, causing them to create synthetic fibers and just try to tweak them and make them a little bit better. So we can see cotton for apparel, clothing. We can see it for sheets and towels, tarps, tents. And all those things are made from cotton, so it's very useful. But now what we're going to talk about are some other types of, or maybe some types of natural fibers that we'll use for clothes. So again, like I said, this is plants for fibers. So now we're making fibers for clothing, paper, other materials for shelter and such. So cotton, okay, basically it's a natural fiber. It's going to absorb moisture and it, uh, it allows things to evaporate really easily, okay? So make we would say that it's the world's most non-edible plant um, basically what happens is the cotton fibers come from the plant seeds um, so the silky fibers they're strong they're flexible and have a gradual spiral that causes the strands to interlock when twisted and that makes them ideal for spinning into thread uh, the second layer of the fibers are shorter and are fuzzy and they're used to make cotton batting uh, rayon and various types of plastic and paper. So you can see this cotton is used for many different things and it's not just one part of the plant that's used, it's, there's other components that are used as well. Now the second we're going to talk about is hemp. Uh, so early makers of genes used hemp. Uh, it's actually the oldest cultivated fiber plant in the world. Uh, so they use things, products included the Bible, uh, sails and ropes and Hemp has a less negative effect on the environment because it uses uh, less land area than trees and can be harvested in a year. Uh, basically, hemp is very durable. It lasts longer than paper, can be recycled up to seven times, and it chokes out weeds naturally and is not prone to uh, insect pests. So hemp was actually used, uh, it has very uh, few harmful effects on the environment. It's actually very environmentally friendly, but... Uh, it, it is ceased to be used because of some of the illegal usages of the plant and such. But um, in terms of the cultivation of the uh, fiber plant and the use on its uh, environmental uh, impacts being very low and the fact that you don't have to use uh, any pesticides and very few herbicides with it, it, it makes it ideal. But for other reasons, it's uh, it's since been banned, the, the use of it. Um, but it's very strong, it's very durable. Uh, flax is the last one we're talking about. And it's a food and fiber crop. So you can use it as both. Uh, the flax fibers, which are smooth and straight, are taken from the stem of the plant, are two to three times stronger than the cotton fibers. But flax fiber, it's used for making linen paper, uh, also linseed oil, which is used... Uh, as a drying oil and paints and varnish and in products such as uh, linoleum and printing inks so we'll see this flax uh, fiber in other components as well so it's not always just used uh, uh, just in terms of fibers clothing and stuff but it can be used in other forms as well so those are just three natural fibers that we'll use and like I said this one right here this is cotton, which is natural fiber, but this polyester is actually synthetic, so this was a manufactured uh, product right here as well. So that's plants for uh, fiber. Okay, so now we've talked about the role of uh, plants in the environment. We've talked about um, plants for food, and now we've talked about plants for fiber. So um, the next thing we'll talk about is uh, the use of plants for medicine and such as well. So there are uh, there is one more screencast coming up. Um, for topic one and that'll conclude the topic one screencast but hopefully this has helped and uh, I guess we'll see you on the next screencast okay thanks bye